Okay, sorry. Does anyone here want to guess what this number means? Right. Well, time by a billion, and that is how many pounds of food waste is thrown away in the restaurant industry each year, which equals out to about $162 billion. Food waste is a problem we all contribute to daily, but it most definitely can skip a trip to the landfill. Above all, food waste should be more than just your leftovers. Food waste can be turned into something that promotes growth, power, and pureness. Hi, I'm Ayla. I'm Morgan. And I'm Maddie. And we are Compromise. Our service is similar to a garbage pickup service, but it's for food waste. Our customers, who are bakeries, cafes, and restaurants, are given these buckets in which they fill with food scraps throughout the day. Then they empty them into this bin, and using a UW Oshkosh provided compost truck, we send it to the UW Oshkosh biodigester, where it is turned into renewable energy. Then we turn the leftovers from that into soil in which we sell. We sell the soil to retailers like Menards and Fleet Farm, or we could sell it to our customers at farmers markets. So potential risk for our business is our pricing, our competitors, and losing customers and our partners. Ayla's gonna tell us a little bit more about some of our competitors. We actually do have a few competitors, Compost Crusaders and Compost Stoves. Compost Crusaders is a food waste collection service in Milwaukee in which they do self finished compost. We were looking over their reviews and we found out that sometimes they can be unreliable with their pickups. We won't be like that because when we pick up our customers, food waste we're picking up to the dates that they've chosen. Compost Dose. Compost Dose doesn't actually go out and collect food waste. They get compost into them in which they then sell them. How have our interviews gone, Ayla? Oh, they've gone actually great. We've gotten 25 interviews and from that we've learned that many of our restaurant and cafe owners don't have a lot of money to spend. But what we're doing is we're doing a trial run with Annie's Phone City Cafe coming this month. Since October, we've done a trial run with our culinary arts classes and our Food for Thought Cafe. From just a month and a half of that trial run, we collected 180 pounds of food waste. Some things that we learned from that trial run is that the lids that we equipped on our buckets were pointless because they got lost easily, and that the buckets are gonna need a sort of liner so that it makes the emptying process easier for our customers. How are we gonna get, keep, and grow our customers? We're getting our customers posting on social media, direct mail, and direct sales. Key, provide data, feedback, and consistency. With the providing data, we're gonna tell our customers how many pounds of food waste they've contributed to. Grow, customers can communicate either in person or online. Our marketing tactics, direct sales, so physically going up to those people and telling them about our product. Videos. We're going to be making a video about how and what to compost. And again, with social media, customers communicating. Here is our market sizing segment. The top number represents our total addressable market, which is if we have 100% of our total of our possible customers. The serviceable adjustable market is the bottom number, which is like a more realistic version of your TAM. How we got these numbers is for restaurants. We took the number of restaurants in the United States and in Fond du Lac County, and how we got our soil tan and SAM is we took the number of households in the United States and in Wisconsin. If we receive $100 today, we will spend it on the bins and buckets, as well as labels for them, as well as liners for the bins, and also our website. Any questions? No, no, we'll have questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, great job. I mean, you guys are all really, really, really well spoken. A little slower would be great because there was a lot of information to digest there. So, with that, that might be my first question. So, tell me a little bit about um, it's very exciting to you have already done some testing with it sounds like your cafe and the well, food here. And what were you testing? With that, was it the collection? You were testing collection there. Okay, so what we were testing was basically if our if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. So for us, we were seeing how long it takes to like fill up that entire bin, like garbage bucket, to see how long, like how many pickups we'll have to do. And also from doing that trial run, we learned that those bins because they're throwing food waste in them, they get really dirty. So we want to make sure the process is easy for our customers. We were also testing like the smell because we heard like. During summer, it's going to smell. So we're testing, like, what about winter? So we figured out that we really don't conduct a lot of smell from the pot 
So just now take me through your MVP test. You've got a cafe lined up for this next round of testing. Is it just one or do you have? Yes, it is one, but we are going to talk to Stone Oak Coffee Shop this Friday, so tomorrow, oh, okay. about seeing if they would like to do it too. Yeah. I think it'd be great if you could get maybe just one more, at least, you know, um, to fill the information you're going to get. Maybe if it's a different type of a place or they have a different volume um, of customers, um, et cetera. Okay. Oh, that's when I said call. Um, can you walk us through kind of your process? So they, you, you have the bucket at the restaurant or cafe. Are you guys coming and picking it up? Is this a weekly pickup, a bi-weekly pickup? Uh, so we're hoping to do a monthly pickup okay. or even every two weeks. It depends. So we're going to do two different um, services also. I don't know if you'd be interested in that. But um, we're doing what they can pay for a three-month subscription or a yearly subscription. Um, so the process would be that the, these restaurant workers, I guess, employees, would take their food waste scraps and they put them in the bucket and then they take the liners out and put them into the garbage bin, which then we go and pick up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Do either of these two school um, places that you're testing with, do they currently compost right now? Um, the Stone Oak Coffee Shop, they compost, he composts at home. So he's like, oh, like, because we interviewed him, and he was like, oh, like, maybe I should, like, start doing it with my restaurant, too. Okay. What's, what are you, are you charging these uh, trials? <coughs> Right now, no, but after three months with um, Amy's Women's City Cafe, we're going to like talk to her about charging. And currently with our cafe, she is reaching out to the school board and our principal to see if she can start the funding to do our service. Okay. How did you come up with the idea of composting? <laughs> oh, okay, so I work at a cafe in North Fond du Lac. And I realized how much food waste is being thrown away and how much food end up like gets expired and that just gets wasted. So for me, it's kind of a pet peeve and it's like, well, you can do more with this. And my father is the one who runs the biodigester, so I have a big background behind it. That's nice. Right. I think it's super cool that you guys have a lot of passion with it. And I think a lot of other people will find that common ground with it to get rid of some of that waste. Do you have an idea of what you're looking at from a cost perspective and, and how it relates to maybe the expenses that people are currently paying for garbage pickup versus your service that you're going to offer? Okay, so we interviewed Andy and we learned that she pays $150 for a month for a pickup twice a week. So then she also mentioned to us that we could make it so that she only has to get it picked up once a week which would lower her cost like, greatly. And she also has to pay $18 to get locks for her dumpster. Um, our pricing, we were thinking about $199 for three months or $399 for a year. If you're wondering how we got those numbers, we took the numbers on like the gas, so how much it's going to take for UWS just to come down here, pick up like the route, and also how much it's going to take for us to pay for these liners, and then um, how much, because we need to make a profit to buy for more buckets and more bins. And that's a favorable cost to what they're currently paying. It'll be good to get learning on that. Your final pitch, hopefully you'll be able to share, you know, thank you good detail around what it costs you, because that's usually where sometimes we're gonna, you're going to learn some uh, unexpected things, of maybe what it's going to cost you versus and also what they're willing um, to pay. I would say for your guys' final pitch to make sure you include that pricing model in your pitch, because that's really good to hear. And then also mention your background with the biodigester and composting that's what people want to hear, that you guys have a connection to it. That it just, it's not just something that you pull out of It's really valuable information to share. Share your passion, because your passion sells your product. I have one, do we have time for one more question? I didn't hear anything about the um, other side of the model, which I heard a lot about testing with the, you, um, uh, the, the, the restaurants and the cafes, which that might be all you have time for. 
you do like part, is part of your business actually selling the compost? Yes. Okay. And is there enough time to you would know this? I guess I don't know this. Um, you go in with the food waste. How long does it take for it to become sellable? Um, so currently we've been giving it all to the biodigester, which then just gets turned into renewable energy. So currently we haven't been doing any of the soil process due to how cold it is. It's hard right. to compost when it's cold outside. So that might not be something you get to test in your model. Okay. Which is fine. Just I would just say maybe just be, you know, like that might be the second phase. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, we're, and it's going still to a composter, or, you know, for renewable energy. Um, but you, you mentioned about you know farmers markets or selling, but I don't know if that's going to be realistic in this short term time frame given the weather. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.